My name is Claire Soria and I was born in Brussels, Belgium in 1935. This was five years before World War II. I do recall very vividly wearing the Jewish star and didn't see anything wrong with that until the family realized that it was used to turn Jewish people in. And uh, that also allowed people who knew Jewish people or saw Jewish people wearing them to denounce them because they, the Belgian people were told that uh, they have to turn in anyone that they knew that was Jewish. I don't think at the beginning people had any idea of what was going on. Even the Jewish people were not aware that things were escalating so fast. Uh, I was in kindergarten at the time and when it was time for me to go to first grade, that's when I found out that Jewish children were forbidden to uh, go to first grade. Soon after uh, the invasion of Belgium, the, uh, my family had, were afraid that uh, I might get caught if they were caught. So they right away looked for a family that I could stay with who were Christians, and they were very fortunate because the, a neighbor, my mother asked them if they would keep me because of fear that I would be taken away. They absolutely said they would take me and uh, keep me with them. So uh, I lived with them during the whole war. My mother went into hiding with my aunt and uncle. They. Uh, found a place where they felt safe, and they sent their children to live with another Christian family. I guess by dividing themselves, they felt that they gave the children at least a better chance to survive. My father decided that nothing was gonna to happen to him. As I said, he was a tailor, and uh, he uh, made ladies clothes, and oftentimes he would go to their addresses to for fitting, and, he just went on life as usual. He said, you want to hide, hide, I'm not hiding. A separation for me was not the worst. What was the worst is when the people I lived with uh, came to me and said, I have to tell you, they took your mom and dad away. And at that point, I could not stop crying. When my father was uh, finally caught, he was uh, riding a streetcar. He, he had no fear he was going to go and continue what he was doing. And unfortunately, they stopped the streetcar and forced everybody out of the streetcar, and that included my father. And from there, they took him uh, also and deported him to Auschwitz, where unlike my mom and my aunt, uh, who uh, stayed in the camp, he was taken to prison. My father was also in the underground, and my father knew a lot of information that they tried to force out of him. He was tortured and eventually killed. I was seven and a half, eight years old. It was around 1942-43. First it was my mom was taken away with my aunt and uncle, and then after that it was uh, my dad, and after th that it was my cousin Nina. She was taken last. The only thing I remember vividly is that uh, the people I lived with uh, ha had me raised Catholic, Christian, and I would pray to Jesus every night that they would come back, that my mom and dad would come back after the war. So it was my faith, if you want to call it that way, that uh, got me through, because I always prayed that they would. Uh, the lady used to be a concert pianist, so even though I was forbidden to go to school, she decided to teach me how to play the piano, which I still play to this day. Her husband was a drummer. He used to play the drums in a little cafe not far from where we lived. And at the very beginning of the war, he would even take me with him to listen to him play. The education I had mostly during the war was playing the piano. They did whatever they could. They, at the very, very beginning, they did have a teacher come to, get, to tutor me. And uh, after a few weeks, the teacher said, you know, I don't think it's a good idea for me to come because 
if the Gestapo sees me coming in, they'll get an idea that I'm probably coming to uh, tutor uh, someone. And the people I lived with uh, said, you know, I think we should change your name. I think it would be safer if we used a different name, a French name, so that if the Gestapo comes looking for you, they won't know who you are. So I chose my friend's name, so my name became Yvette. So during the whole war, my name was Yvette Collin. When I changed my name to Yvette, they said, why don't we try to enroll you in a different school and give the name Yvette Collin, and maybe you'll be able to get some education, which they did. They went and enrolled me in the school, I went with them, and uh, before we left the principal's office, she said, by the way, I want you to know, if this child happens to be Jewish, the Gestapo will come and pick her up. So we left, and by noon, they called the school and gave a phony excuse that my mother came to get me, and I never did go back to school after that. I actually did see the Gestapo go from house to house and pulling people home, out of their homes and uh, force them into uh, uh, trucks uh, that then they were eventually deported to a concentration camp. And there was one gentleman in particular, Monsieur Henri, I know that he was uh, uh, taken out of this house, but they forced him, they didn't care. And uh, if they did not uh, do as they were told, they were shot. You also had the sirens, because the sirens was a, a way for the, the residents to know whether or not uh, there were, were bombings coming. So when you'd hear the siren, uh, most people went to look for shelter. Uh, we'd go down the cellar. And uh, then with the second siren, we would come back up. And oftentimes we would come back up and that's when we could see down the street, up the street, homes demolished. And also the, that, the area where the railroad uh, passing was uh, getting hit, maybe not exactly where they intended to, but you could see that too. I remember planes overhead where the Germans uh, were fighting against the Allies overhead where we lived. And I remember that uh, uh, we heard a plane going down. And the next thing we saw is uh, someone coming down in, with a parachute. And it was one of our allies. And the people I lived with quickly brought him in and made sure that he was reconnected with his unit. When the war was over, all I could do now is wait for Jesus to bring my mom and dad back. So for quite a while, I was just waiting for their release. I had no, it's not as if, okay, today the war is over, they're gonna come back today, no. I never had that in mind. I just felt that they will come back. And then when I saw that Nina came back, so I felt that, oh, and the other one came back. So it always gave me hope that next would be my mom and dad. I remember the day that Nina sat down with me and not only told me that my mom and dad were not coming back, but explained to me the fact that I am, was Jewish. And uh, I never really took that under consideration until that moment because I was raised Christian by the Christian family. And uh, so that was the beginning of the change in my life. I came to this country in 1949. The war was over in 45. By the time I went to stay with them and left. I came to this country in May of 49, so it's about three and a half, four years. I was close to 10 years old. I had no, had no education. So they said, okay, we'll try you for a couple of months in third grade. If you can't catch up, we'll uh, have you stay. So that's what I did. I started, I said, third grade, I'll, I'll go, but I will not go to first grade. I'm also, a, a firm believer. I, I believe in the God Almighty. And I do believe that as long as you have belief that things can turn around, things can improve, and you do whatever you can yourself to see that it does, there's always hope. When you, when you give up hope, I feel that that's when you're in trouble. Two things, never forget. 
and those who tell you that it never happened, if you know one who witnessed it, make sure you let them know that you know better. But there are people out there, and we know that, who will already say to you, it never happened. No way. And that, I hope that by my telling my story, I prove to you that on the contrary, I know for a fact, I was there. So that's the one message. Don't, don't ever forget. And don't ever let it happen again.